immutable Linux distros are sort of the newest kid on the block in the Linux distro space, with some of the older projects like Flatcar going back maybe five or so years. There certainly might be older projects, and if there are, please do let me know. But they didn't really start gaining that much attraction until the rise of flat packs and things like Fedora Silverblue, and much more recently with Valve's Steam Deck and the new version of SteamOS. But due to this being such a new concept, there is a lot of misconceptions over what they are and what they let you do. So this author, George Castro, wrote this blog post about myths regarding immutable distros. So I thought it'd be fun to go over these and expand upon his points. The first one being over-rotating on the word immutable, as in over-focusing, over-obsessing over the fact they're called immutable distros, as in an unchanging distro. Immutable is a terrible name to call these distros because it's not what the term would initially suggest. When we say immutable distro, we don't mean the entire system is immutable. If it was, you wouldn't have a functioning home directory you could actually save user data. And for most use cases, that's not very useful. What we actually mean is the core system, things like your user directory, where you'll find your installed applications, your default application configs, the documentation for applications, that is going to be unmodifiable. So there is a blog post by Colin Walters that suggests some better terms for explaining these systems. The first one being fully managed. The system does not have unmanaged state as in the admin of the system can't go and make unexpected changes to the core system, which in many cases, depending on what you're modifying, like say modifying something in your user directory, which most of the time you shouldn't be touching, might get overwritten in a future package update. It is image-based. Much like with Android, when there is a core system update, you're not updating each of the individual programs running on the back end, like all of the core utils, your firmware, things like that. When there is an update to all of that stuff, you just download the new image and it replaces the old one, which also makes the system very reprovisionable. So you can take out that old image and replace it with a new one, and it just happens. There's not really any worry about it. It just does it and you're good to go. Also, because you can't go and make unexpected changes, the system has anti-hysteresis properties. Basically, there are some changes you can make to your system, which even after that change is no longer running, might have knock-on effects. Let's say you were to go and run a script that modifies your pseudo config and removes your user from the wheel group. Even though that original script is no longer running, the effect of removing you from the wheel group is going to knock on into the future. But because you can't modify the core system, a lot of those changes you might make simply are not possible. But because we can't exactly call it all of these different things, Immutable is basically the best we've got. It's not great either, but at this point, it's pretty much stuck. Secondly, I can't modify my desktop or get the window manager I want. So when it comes to anything that would modify a user configuration file, or it would install a plugin that saves somewhere in your home directory, all of this stuff is gonna work exactly the same way it works literally anywhere else. But if I customize what you mean is installing extra applications or getting rid of your desktop environment or window manager and replacing it with another? The answer to that is sort of yes and no. You can't customize it the same way you would on something like Arch, for example, but it's a massive shift in the way the paradigm works. So instead of being done at the package manager phase, you would want to do it at the image phase. You would want to generate a custom image that uses the desktop and uses the applications that you want to see instead. And you could base this image off of something like Fedora Silverblue. So you don't need to maintain an entire distro yourself. You're just taking that distro and then modifying it before you install it. Now in things like Silverblue and some of the other things based on OS Tree, there is a system known as 
overlay packages where you can install extra packages like you would on a regular distro, but instead of installing them in your user bin directory, they'll be installed in a user writable section of memory, which mostly is going to be fine. But just like using the AUR on something like Manjaro, sometimes you're going to install an overlay package and what it needs to run is not going to be available in that current image. But if you don't want to make your own custom image and you're just looking at what is available, things like Fedora Kanoite and Fedora Silverblue and all of the others out there, yes, it is totally fair to say that a lot of desktops aren't available. But projects like this didn't always exist. The reason why Kanoite exists is someone wanted to use Silverblue, but use KDE instead. Next myth, I want the freedom to break my computer. Even on something like Silverblue, there are plenty of ways to break your system. You can, say, keep running fork bombs and just have it slightly on that edge where your system isn't going to shut down, but at some point it might light on fire. Or you could delete all of your user files and have nothing in your home directory. Or you could hit it with a hammer. An immutable distro isn't going to stop any of this, but it does stop a lot of the boneheaded ways of ruining your system. Let's say, for example, manually deleting your core utils, or something I did while installing LFS, um, changing the permission of your root directory, and everything that's a child recursively from that point, which is not a good idea and um, ruins everything. So if you want to break your system, go big or go home. Deleting your root directory with rm-rf is not impressive. I think the freedom to break your computer commonly gets linked in with the freedom to customize your system. And as we established earlier, you can still customize it, it's just done a little bit differently. Next up, immutable distros are for noobs for beginner Linux users, not for experts. And I think when we're talking about the popular examples like Silverblue, for example, Silverblue is absolutely great for beginner Linux users. It's going to give you a really weird experience compared to a lot of other distros, but you could put someone on it who just wanted to like check their emails and things like that. It's going to give them a fairly nice experience, but that doesn't mean that's the only things out there. This right here is OS Tree Pity Workstation. This is Martin Pitt's desktop. This is running the Sway Window Manager and Podman slash Toolbox Room Development and running a couple of less common graphical applications. This is very much not for beginner users. Just getting it working is uh, a little bit more complex, requires actually like reading a GitHub page. Or there's something like Sodalite, which like with Martin Pitt's system, also takes a little bit of work to like get functioning. The way these work is these are custom images. So you start by installing Silverblue and then you replace it with the images that are available here. And it just gets rid of the old system and brings in this new one. If you're an expert or an advanced user, an immutable distro is all about composability. So you take all of these components, your different programs, things like that, you tell the machine, I want you to generate an image, and then it spits out a new result. I haven't seen any good tutorials on how to do so, but there is a bit of documentation out there. Or you can just go and look at what's being done with these projects and then sort of base it from there. Next up, containers have no place on the Linux desktop. So when you're using an immutable system like this, most of the time you're going to be installing your extra packages through something like Flatpak. And Flatpaks are obviously containerized. Now, there is certainly some um, debate about how tight that container actually is, but that's a whole nother discussion for a different video. Besides the distro-independent installs, the main purpose of these containers is ensuring that applications ask for permission before accessing certain resources, whether it's certain devices or files or things like that. And the desktop space is the only part of the Linux space where containers aren't just generally considered important. If we're talking about the mobile space or the server space, they have been long adopted. 
they're not perfect. They do lead to a size increase. You might have a performance reduction. It may require some like hacking around to get things to work like they should be, but containers aren't a bad thing and can protect against either intentional or accidental damage from an application. You might have an application that's written kind of poorly that accidentally accesses something it shouldn't be accessing, but the container is going to stop that. But in the end, you just don't need to use them. You can either have an image that has everything you need installed out of the box, or you can just use overlay packages and not have to deal with it. But what if I have an edge case? So if you're like Richard Hughes and your desk looks like someone dumped a truck of motherboards onto it and you're doing low level stuff, then you're probably not the intended audience. Or a more down to earth general Linux example, if you're like me and you are constantly swapping in and out new software, most of which is only packaged on places like the AUR, there's absolutely no shot a lot of it's going to have flat packs or app images, then the mutable distro is a genuinely terrible idea and is going to give you an awful desktop experience. But no one out there is suggesting that every distro should be an immutable distro. If you don't like what an immutable distro does, then it's not for you. But if you do, or if you're someone who just wants a system that works, you're never going to install any applications because everything you do is in your browser. Well, maybe an immutable distro is going to achieve your goal. And lastly, this stuff is just not ready. And yes, in many ways, that is absolutely true. You don't have as much coverage with Flatpak as you might like. You don't have as many pre-made images with the desktops you might want to be using. Absolutely true. But this is the beauty and the massive downside of FOSS. Things don't exist until the community wants to go and make it and make it exist. If you care at all about the immutable model, get out there and help. Even if it's just providing documentation for a project you like, that is still going to help because it saves that time from a developer who is going to have to do it. Or maybe donate a bit of money to a project you like, or anything at all to help these projects. If you don't care about the immutable model, totally fine. And that's okay. But if you want it to improve, you need to put in the work. So let me know, do you use an immutable Linux distro? Are you just discovering them right now and have no idea what's going on? I would love to know. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, it's on your bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.